Do you hear the music? Florica from the opera Grozovan. It's strange how few have heard of it because it was the very first Moldavian opera and it deserves much more attention. It was written by a honor Moldavian Jewish composer, David Gershfeld, for the State Opera and Ballet Theater in Kishinev. He used to say that his music is the result of his inspiration to Moldovan culture. I believe the soul of the city becomes alive with the love of people living in it. And now standing here, I do realize how many things were created out of love for the city of Kishino. Monuments, buildings, memorials, paintings, poems. В год далекий теплым летом на смешной реке Бычке я родился пред рассветом в том еврейском городке. Жили там и молдаване, и гуцулы, и цыгане, и равины, и попы, но евреи и горожане выделялись из толпы. Isn't that beautiful? These are the lines from the poem Jewish Town by Lev Rukman, a Moldavian Jewish poet, Yiddish translator, publicist, and literary critic. He wasn't wrong when he named the poem Jewish Town. Since the foundation of Kishinev, the Jewish population was constantly growing and by the beginning of 20th century it was above 46%. Then the wave of anti-Semitism engulfed the region. Most Jews had to flee from Kishino, and many of those who decided to stay were killed. However, nowadays the Jewish population in Moldova consists of about 10,000 to 15,000 people. But it seems people have forgotten how many Jews lived here not so long ago and how they contributed to what we call Kishino today. Only recently, when my friends and I started our research, we found out how many remarkably talented Jews lived and created here in Kishinev. We found out how their contribution to the history of this place can be found everywhere, can be seen at every turn and can be felt at every step. Come along, I want to show you my city. This is the National History Museum of Moldova, where amongst many works of art, you can see the works of a Jewish sculptor and artist, Lazar Dubinovsky. This is the Menger Jewish Library, where you can find more than 50,000 books of Jewish writers of Moldova in Yiddish, Hebrew, Russian, Romanian, English, and other languages. Among them are books by Boris Lekader, Eliezer Steinberg, Sudit Shulim, and many, many others. And this is the Yemenescu Theatre, where many years ago Kent performed on the stage. And all the scenery and props for their productions were made by the talented Jewish production designer Yaakov Averbuch. All of them lived and worked here in Kishinev, in our city. Well, I wouldn't call it the same city. At that time, Kishinev did not look what it looks like now at all. World War II left ruins behind and nothing remained in the center of the city. When I asked my grandfather what it was like at the time, he told me that for some time after the war had ended, people were still afraid to go outside. The streets were quiet and empty, and it seemed that the soul of a once beautiful place was severely wounded. It's frightening to understand how easy it is to destroy something and how incredibly difficult and challenging it can be to bring it back to life. Have you ever thought how can a single person influence the appearance of an entire city? How can a man gifted with unusual ways of thinking can heal the wounded soul of a destroyed place? This is the building of the Kishino State Circus. 
For a long time, it was considered to be the best in the USSR and fourth place in the world. The building is still considered to be one of the best in the capital. The main architect was Simeon Shoichet, the winner of the State Prize of Moldova in the field of literature, art and architecture. Simeon Shoichet was born in Dubasari. With the outbreak of World War II, his father, Mikhail Shoichet, was called up to the front and killed soon after. His family was evacuated to Central Asia and they returned to Dubasari after the war. It was a difficult time for the mother with three children on her shoulders. They didn't have money to buy food sometimes, so she had to send Simeon to live with his aunt in Kishino. My great-grandfather, Mikhail Bekir, used to work alongside Shoichit for some time, and he used to tell us many stories about the process of constructing the circus. First, it was drawn as a two-floor round building, symmetrical from every part. But the idea was overruled. The Soviet government didn't like how different it looked from every other building in the Union. Shoichet was mad. He turned the sketch into pieces and threw them flying into the bin. He never stopped trying, though. He then added another diamond-shaped building with a small arena in its center from behind the main stage. Eventually, his plan got approved. It was what they called a uh, dalgastroy, which means the process took quite a while, 10 years to be accurate. But after all the problems had been coped with, the circus opened its doors for the first time in 1981. Sadly enough, in 2004, the circus was closed for repairs, but never reopened. But for all of us, this building is still an important and inherent symbol of the city. A message which was handed over to us from the time when people had to learn to live again, to hope again, and to continue to struggle for what they loved. As the lead architect, Simeon Shoike took part in the development of seven cities in the Republic. He developed the general urban plan of Belts, which changed the face of the city, as well as the master plan of Kishino and its surroundings. The tragic story of his family, as well as his love towards his native country, both became his source of inspiration. He wasn't mad at his mother for abandoning him, but the sad experience he had in his childhood affected his views on life. He was mad at the war, at the injustice he witnessed in his childhood and throughout all of his life. So on his projects, monuments for the victims of the Holocaust were built in many locations across Moldova. Simeon Shoike died at the age of 79, a week before his 18th birthday, December 24, 2010. He left us many things to reveal, things to discover, and so many stories to tell. All the buildings, all the memorials he protected remind us of the people living here before us. They remind us that we are the keepers of our city soul. Each person is a melody, and when they connect, they create music, the music of the city. Do you hear the music? Shoichet spent most of his work hours projecting buildings alone in his office. He paid great attention to the practical training of all young architects and especially those he worked with. 
He liked the passion of the young, and that's why he was taking a lot of newbies to work with him. Although not all of his projects were implemented, each of them contained a meaning that was later transferred to another project of his, even after his death. Andrei Yeshano, an architect who worked alongside Shoichet, 